Hello and welcome once again on this Monday afternoon. Thank you very much for joining me. I can see lots of you on today. I think um, some of it's the half term, isn't it? So hopefully, get a few more people today. It'd be really nice to have a bit more chat going on on there, won't it? So, wherever you are, the UK or further afield, it's really nice to have your company today. If you've not met me before, let me introduce myself. My name is Simon Williamson, and I'm here from Avago Ink Designs to give you some inspiration with our wonderful products and also some inspiration that you can probably use your own products to as well. So, we're just here to have a bit of fun together and some craft. Now, we are available on the social media sites. So, uh, like and subscribe, and you'll be kept informed of any notifications of any upcoming news. Um, and also, we've got this brilliant feature on the screen as well. I've introduced it for the last few weeks, but it's going to be a regular feature. So, I'll just point it out for you. So, we've got a QR code just down there at the bottom. Ooh, let's reach a bit further. So, scan to shop, use the code SHOP13. And when you put the SHOP13 code into that bit, it will bring up all the products that you've seen me use today in the show. And that's fantastic anyway, because it means you don't have to write the codes down or remember the names. You can have a nice, easy way to shop the show afterwards. So remember that Shop 13 is for today's show. And to make it even better, to celebrate Tony's fabulous 2 million views this week, we've got a bit of a discount on. So the, we've chosen five other go products that we're using this week, uh, this show, sorry. And we're going to, there's a few pounds off each one individual if you want to buy just one. But if you buy three, you're going to save 30%. That's a fantastic saving. So that's using the new Game On collection, which can sit there. And then I've just put in two back, um, backing dies. We've got the Celebration and the Sweet Sprinkles. So if you want to buy any three of those five items, you'll get a fantastic discount of 30% off. So let's just celebrate this week, shall we? Two million views, 30% off, inspiration, how to craft network. Your week sorted, isn't it? It really is. Let's, have a, let's say hello to a few people that's on then. So we've got Melanie on, Denise, Nola, Anita, Carol, Marlene, Melanie. Quite a few names there, some that I've not heard before. So thank you for joining me. Um, Port Sunlight as well, that's coming up, isn't it? Who's going to get the tickets for that? I think it's the 22nd of April. So um, have a look on the website. It's on the, the Avago page for details, but... I'm going, it'd be nice to see you there if you can make it. Uh, Anne's on as well. Hi, Anne. Right, let's start off with our first card then. So this one, I'm loving this one, I've got to say. I'm having a good play around with some card, and I've come up with this one to show you. So let me just take this out. So we've got a lovely little card with some nice detail on there. <clears throat> it's a bit of a magic card. So if you can see, it's going to become a card and a gift wallet. So if we put the actual gift wallet on there, close it up, open it the other way and it'll transfer over and it'll load it in there. So you can put some money in there, a little gift voucher. You can even put like a gift card in there. Just a little bit novel and a nice little way of making a bit of an unusual card. So it looks complicated, but I promise you, once you understand it, it's really easy to make. So let's get started and make this one. So the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need some pieces of coloured card. So I've chosen some pinky ones for this one. You're going to need four pieces, which are six before. So I've used coloured card that's the same both sides as well. And then you're going to need four pieces of white card, which is three and three quarters by five and three quarters. And they're going to be like your matte layers in between. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work on our inner panels. So let's just move the outer ones out of the way. I've already stamped two up. It's going to go with these two designs. But let's get the other two made up now. Karen says she's got a coffee. Oh, look at you. So I've got our inner panels that we're using. Put a little magnet on there just to keep it steady. And let's stamp this brilliant stamp out. And this, all the stamps I'm using today are in that offer as well. So um, if you feel inspired, at least you're seeing them actually being used real, real time. Carol says she's got a free Monday for a change. We'll push that down. And then I'm just going to move that magnet up to the top half now just to secure it. And thus we've designed these stamps that you get three in the pack. These will line up. So you just need to find your pattern, which I believe is just about there. Just make sure that's right, yep. And then drop that back down there. And they should all line up again. Oh, 
didn't quite make it in the middle there, but let's get but this one better as well. So let's have a look. It's going to go there. Give that a good push down. That's better. You can see it all lines up here. Just, just slightly off centered there, but we've got that panel there. I'm going to bring in the other stamp now, and this is in the same set, the um, Game Over one. And this is the one with like the big imagery on it. So you've got some lovely kind of like, um, I don't think you can see it on there, but you've got like start, start the game, retro game, you've got some controllers, pizza, some really nice images, but you'll see it better when I've stamped this out for you. I know somebody was just off to the post office, I think, and they said that they just remembered how we're on. So, don't forget to go to the post office afterwards. <laughs> Let's do that one more time. And I'm just going to move that down like we did with the other one to continue that design. So we've got the bottom of the pizza. Make sure that's on both sides. Let's pick that up. What we're all doing today, then we're having a craft, crafty afternoon. We're having a sneaky lunch break from work. I'm just going to move that up. And we'll just get this last little bit at the bottom here. So I'm just going to use um, the bottom of the pizza slices just to line it with. And then pick this up. There we go. So if I just take that stamp out of the way. So you can see now we've got our two inner panels and our two outer panels. We've got them kind of like retro design on this one. I'm going to keep these for the inner panels and these for the outer. So let's just put them to one side for a second. I'm going to bring in two of the outer panels that I cut down. And these are the six before ones. And to start off, I'm just going to get these situated where we want them. So I'm just going to glue them with a nice border. Just really simple all the way around there. Just use some white glue for this. Pop those down. You don't have to do it in a, a design as well, but I think it just adds to the card. But I did make the mistake of not sticking it down first, and it was really hard to put it in position afterwards. So just make sure you do it first and it'll make it easier for you. Let's pop that one in. Give that a good push down. So no one says she's going to be crafting later, she's promised herself. Don't break that promise. So the next thing we need is some ribbons. So I've got some pink ribbon here just to bring this kind of light scheme together. So you need to cut four pieces, and you need enough to just tuck either side. So if we cut that one there, two, three, and four. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a cross over one panel. What we need to do is cross that in the centre, and we need to secure these bits here. Now you can do it with double-sided tape, you can do it with sticky tape, whichever you prefer to do. So I'm going to use a bit of double-sided tape today so I know it's really secure. The red line is double-sided. And I'm just going to flip that over. Yep. Put some over to this edge so it's a bit easier to locate. Take the backing off. And then I can just cross that over, one going there and one going there, and then can bring it back to the front. So we've got our cross panel in the, set, in the um, center, and it's all like that. So that's the first panel that we've done. 
Try not to stick it to my mat now. Let me just take a bit of that stickiness off. And then we've got the other side here. So we're going to put some across the top of this one. And we're going to secure these underneath on the outer ray. So all the outer edge ones go under and you stick them underneath. That's the best way to remember. So same again, I'm going to use some double-sided tape. I'm just going to lift that up, put a little bit of tape top and bottom. Kathy says those backgrounds are stunning. I just love the fact that you get three backgrounds in one stamp set. I think it's such a good way of saving some money. So let's pop that one across there. A little bit higher. We'll do the same with that one. It's a bit springy, my ribbon. I do apologise. So you can see now we've got a cross on this one. And you've got your two straight bits on this one. So now what we need to do is secure these underneath this other panel, and that are going to keep them so you can actually stand it up as a card. So I think the best way to do this is we'll put some double-sided down the centre of this panel first, and just at this edge. And don't worry about the amount of tape as well, because we're going to be putting a face on this one to keep it all nice and tight. So if we flip these over now this way, we know that those have got to be crossed over. Just get those in position. We can hold it down up to his other piece of card. And we can just pull that diagonally across there. And that should give us our kind of cross on the front there. So that's the first step. It looks really wobbly at this stage, but I promise you it's going to get better. It just needs a little bit more secure, and I'll show you how we're going to do that. So we're going to deal with these straight bits now. So we're going to put a little bit of tape on the opposite card there. And a little bit of tape there. And what we're going to do now is run this piece of ribbon underneath and through that gap in the centre. Just tuck it in there, that's, that's one. And we'll do the same for the top one, so underneath there. And then we're going to secure these under our double-sided tape that we've put. I'll turn this over in a second and you'll be able to see the pattern we've made and then you'll know, understand how it's working. So just pull that tight and stick that down. Pull that tight and stick that down there. If I turn that over now, you can see we've got our cross on one side and we've got our straight bits on the other. So all these edges are secured by going just around the edge of the card. You can see it there. And then all the inner ones cross over to the opposite piece of card and that's going to give you like your inch, so to speak. That's going to get, help the mechanism work. We'll just give it a quick go. Yeah, that's working fine. So we've got all that there. So rather than move anything now, I'm going to put some wet glue around the edge of these. Over as bits of ribbon. Oh, it's not going wrong. It's not going wrong. I'm so proud. And then the other two um, 6x4 bits of card that we brought in. This is going to hide your mechanisms now, so we can put that down over these, and that's going to trap all your ribbon bits inside. Let's put that one there. Turn this one around so it's a bit easier for me to see. We'll put that one over there. And then I'm going to close it up and give that a good push down. Donna says, glad we can watch the video back. I know, it's, it's one of them that sometimes you need to watch rather than like listen to, but I've got the card there and you can see that's working and you can see it stands up this way and it also stands up the other way. So whichever way I want to open that card, it's going to work perfectly. And we know the ribbons are working that way. So that is perfect. So we're going to flip this over and then we can design our outer edges. So I've got them two lovely panels that we've created. They're a little bit stark on the edge, though, and because I've got the ribbon going on there, I want to just take it down a little bit. So if I get 
a piece of scrap card in. And I've got the lovely um, magenta ink from Stamps By Me. And I'm just going to lightly dust the edges of this card, just to take the edge off. Just round the edges, I'm not bothered about the centre. Just give a nice little bit of a pink glow. Just so it brings our card all back together. Yeah, that, that is the advantage, isn't it, Maureen, about seeing the video back. You can um, refresh yourself on the technique. So that's that one, just to soften it down. Do the same for this one. It's also a good way, though, of seeing, like, technical cards, isn't it? Having a go yourself, which is what have a go is all about, and knowing that you can achieve what you didn't think you could. This is the kind of card I probably would have purchased in the past, not knowing I could make it myself. There we go. So it's got a nice bit of pinkiness to those colours now, just to break it down a bit. And then we're going to get these stuck onto our outer panels there. So let's get some more glue on that. Nice border of that pink just to bring it together. Give that a good push down. <laughs> Donna says it's so clever, I still can't understand how the ribbon changes. It's like magic. I know. I like a magic trick, I've got to say. I'm more like Debbie McGee though, aren't I? Let's be honest. Let's just pop that over there. Give that a good push down. And then we've got our actual base card now completely made. So just want a little bit more decoration on this kind of front panel. So in that stamp set, in the Game On collection, sorry, you get a lovely um, kind of like retro game console, the handheld one. So I'm going to use these just to break up the front panel a little bit more. So if I use the scrap of white card that I've got, I'm going to stamp them in black. I'm going to stamp three of them in total. Just lift that last one there. <laughs> you need a first light, Tommy Cooper. Just like that. <laughs> and take that one off. And because I use that magenta ink for the actual dust of them corners, I'm going to use it to watercolour these in. So I can put a little squash down on a piece of a glass mat. So I'll bring in that small one, actually, the companion one, then I can, it's easy to clean up later. It's like having a portable water palette, isn't it, when you do it on a separate mat? So let's just water that down. I'm just going to add this pinky colour to these game consoles. And I quite like leaving some of the areas white, just so we can give it a pop of a different colour in a second. So if we just take that around, leave the screen and these little button areas white, and we'll just jazz them up in a second. Do the next one. Taking that pink down. You don't need a lot of um, shading as well, because it's got such a defined image. You can do it in a block colour, it looks really good. If you didn't want to watercolour though, you could also cut it out of a coloured piece of card, and that would be another way of doing it. Almost like a paper piece. And I'm just taking that pink round these areas. And just to this last one.
<laughs> and you're getting the idea of this as well. So if you want, you could change this up. You could put a lot more detail on the front. Just be careful on the front, though, not to make it too three-dimensional, because it's the bit you're going to hold to make the uh, magic trick illusion. So you don't want it to, like, come off or get damaged in somebody's hands. So I am going to keep these flat today. So I've got my lovely pink shades there. And then I found some of this in my cupboard. This is the eye zinc pigment. So this is titanium silver. And it comes in like a, almost like a nail polish, doesn't it, with a brush. So I'm going to use this just to add a little bit of silver detail to some of these buttons. And you can brush it on. You could use a paintbrush if you wanted to, but it's a little bit translucent, but it just picks up that detail really well. So I'm doing the buttons. Do this long button as well. So glittery as well, though, I'm going to say. And I think we're just going to put a little flash of this silver through the screen as well. So let's just pick up a bit of that. And just add to that screen to make it sparkle a bit more. And there you go. So we've got our three games consoles now. Give that a quick blast with a heat gun, and that'll just uh, make sure that's dried. So Nola says she's waiting for the small map to come back. Have you, have you, um, ooh, turn this on. Have you been onto the website, Nola? So if you actually put in to notify you when it's back in stock, then you'll be the first to know when it is actually restocked. So if you haven't done that already, it's really good. I know um, when I um, shop on the um, How to Craft Network, if there's something that's out of stock, that's the way I find out when it's back in stock. So might be an idea to do if you haven't already. So I'm just going to chop these out. Really easy shapes, these. So, just taking it around the edge. Just chop these other two out. And I didn't put a sentiment on this, because then it was like a, a generic gift wallet, weren't it, for you? So you can choose. You could also put a little message inside if you want to. around this last one. Mm -hmm. Get rid of this piece of card that we don't need. So we've got our lovely little retro pink handsets now. I'm just going to get them glued onto our card front. So let's get them, like I said, keep them flat. That's what I found best, that you don't knock them and ruin your actual display when you're doing this trick. I have one over here. One up here at the top. And one at the bottom. I think we'll go just down there. Look. Just going to hold them in situation just for a second. I'll move that mat out of the way. And now the big reveal, let's see if it works. So if I get this, this um, very popular gift voucher, I'm sure that you've got one that looks better than these. <laughs> so if we open this card up now, we can put that onto this side. And then if we close it up and open it the other way, it transfers it over. So really easy way of doing it, really quirky. You can do it whichever way you want to. So go onto that side, turn it over, and then it's on that side. Really good way. Maybe put a photo in there with a little message you want to give somebody. Uh, it's just a bit quirky, isn't it? And then it stands up as a card as well. So I hope you've really enjoyed that first demonstration. I was really glad I got it right because I thought if I don't get these ribbons the right way, it's not going to work. But we've done it. We've made a really good creative card. I know you can have a do with this as well. So have a go yourselves. And if you need to watch the video back, that's what it's there for. 
But what we're going to do now is give you a little bit of inspiration from the Avago brand, and that's going to give you some more kind of like ideas that you could use our products for. And I'll see you back in a couple of minutes for the second demo. See you in a bit. Hi, my name's Simon Williamson. I'm the guest demonstrator for Avago Ink Designs. Avago Inks is a, it's basically images that we can put together so anybody can have a go. I think I love the most about crafting is it can just give you time out in your own head. It can just down tools, not think about your mobile phone and just enjoy what you're going to do. Create a project and be proud of what you've made. My inspiration comes really from lots of sources. I love like looking at current trends. I like looking through the internet. I like looking at what other people make. And I think truly inspiration comes from picking bits out of everything you see, pull it all together and make something that you can do with your skills. Have a go products, we've got three collections out at the moment. We've got as dinosaur range, as farmyard range, and as little owl collection. And the main crux of the actual design is there's a big image there, and a little character you can play around, have fun, and there's always some puns in there as well, so liven up the card and make it a bit humorous for everybody. I think if you're thinking about trying one of our products, is don't be afraid. Just buy any of the kits that you, I mean, you feel like you want to, and you'll always create a really good card from there. There's some good characters, good sentiments, and some really fun images in there. So just, just grab one and have a go. And welcome back. I can see from your comments you like that card, so thank you for that. So glad it went well, I tell you. I'm so nervous for that one. But it's nice to push the boundaries and try different cards that you have um, kind of wouldn't have approached before. This next one's a nice, easy card, so don't you worry. And it's really kind of um, a really colourful one. So this is just showing you how we can use some of them little elements out of that card with one of those really fantastic background dies that are in the promotion today. This is the sprinkle one. You could just use a celebration one and have the double panel. It'll work exactly the same, giving you them coloured papers that shine through. So let's get started on this one then. So this is more like of a die cutting card. So I've got... A piece of my um, card. Let's see what size this card? Let's have a look. This is a five by seven. I've cut some coloured paper, four and three quarts by six and three quarts, and I've got a black panel, which is four and a half by six and a half. And then that's going to mount up really nicely and create our kind of background on our card. So let's get the piece of black cut first. I'm going to use that lovely. Sprinkle die. It's a massive die. Look at that detail. There's a little stars and it, little like strands, like um, cake toppers. Thing, you know, like them all hundreds and thousands. I think they're called. So let's get that onto there. So we make sure we're within the actual die area. I'm going to bring in my plates. Take that over. Sandwich that so it doesn't move. I'm going to run that through my, my broken music box. I don't play music, look. Maureen says she loves that last card. Mana says this is a real magic card. Oh, that's nice. It's quirky though, isn't it? So I'm just going to pull that off there. Move that to that side. Just look at that, how good that is. If I put that coloured background on there, just look how that pops. All them, like, kind of... My elements make some glow, doesn't it? Just using that piece of vibrant card and that die really creates a card on its own. Right, let's get this glued together, then. So I'm going to just pick out some little open areas of card just to put the glue, and that'll keep it stable. And then just run as much as I can down the outer edge just to hold it in place. And then let's get that centred on our piece of coloured vibrant card. Get that a good push down. I love it when you can make a really I think Tim should make a tune me into the handle. <laughs> Maybe it could be the new thing. It could have um, like a different melodies that are played on the stamps by me um, die cutting machine. And I'm just going to get this mounted straight onto the white card blank. And 
and that's going to give our background to our card. Just hold that down, make sure it grabs. I hope you've all made your Valentine's cards ready for tomorrow. There we go. So that's our background made. You can see all them little colours coming through. It's a really nice textured kind of background. So I'm going to move that to one side now. And we're going to move on to the actual characters that are going to go in the centre. So, in fact, I'll not use that. I'm just going to do it straight on the mat. It's such a small stamp. So I've got our three little aliens, like, that are landing. So I've got those in little stamping blocks. They're ready. And then I have got a strap of the, the um, card that's on the background. And we're just going to die cut just a few circles. I've already done a few, just so we've got them coming together. But if we run through a, about another one, I think, another one or two. Just give us some nice background. So we've, let's have a bit more of a yellow one there, look. Pop that through. So it's just like a, a circle die that I got in my stash, but it's exactly the right size to go with the um, hole points that I'm going to be using as well for the inner bit. So just run that through. And then we'll just see if there's any other areas. I think I'd like a little bit of this, um, like, this dark blue and pink. I think it's quite a nice little colour. It'll bring the card together a bit more. So we'll just run that through one more time. Move that out of the way. And then I've got a small punch. Um, I would say it's about an inch circle. I think there might have been one of these on the Stamps by Me website, but this is an old one I had in my stash. Um, I'm not sure if it's in stock, but... So I'm just going to cut a few of these out. I love a good punch, I'm going to say. And you can see these one-inch punches line up really well, giving you that colourful border that we're going to be creating. So it's a really good way of doing it. So let's stamp these circles first. So we've got our different little... like little aliens, aren't they? That are landing, computerised aliens. So let's stamp them onto the centre of our circles. That's two of that one. Let's bring in a different one. So versatile these as well. I like those um, like outer space invader games, aren't they? Let's get this last one. You could do them in colours, like I said, but I just think because we're going to be putting these onto these coloured circles, you don't necessarily need to. So let's pop them to that side in case we need them. Let's put the lid on this um, midnight black ink that we're using. And then let's get our sentiment stamped as well. So we're going to use the congratulations ones for this. So I'm just going to bring up the stamping platform just so I can re-ink this in case I need to go in what, more than once. So let's pop that there. Uh, congratulations. Pick that up. Give that a good ink in. Push that down. Let's see what we've got. So we just need to do a little bit more at that end. That's good, congratulations. And it's in that kind of um, computer kind of text, isn't it? So let's give that a bit of a trim down. And then what we'll do is we'll assemble the cord all as one. So I'm just going to trim along the base. I 
I'm going to try and make this one as square as possible. But you've seen me in the past, if you're not good with straight lines, do a quirky shape, it looks really good. Just move that ink out of the way. So that's our kind of sign. I think, let's, um, let's mount that on a bit of black as well to make it pop. Use my tape one just to secure this bit. Just a nice fine edge of black. Just trim around that. They're very big, these scissors. I borrowed them off Tony, but she doesn't know, so don't tell her anybody. <laughs> That's that, and then let's get this mounted onto our card. So I just need to find where to put the coloured paper. Here it is. So let's get that onto a bit of a bit of this card that we feel is going to bring in all them colours that we're using. I think I'm going to stick it dead across there, and I'm going to get most of the shades in of this card. Then let's go. And then we're going to trim this down a little bit more just to give another colourful mount. Gives a bit more detail as well. Use your paper trimmers if you prefer, but I, I do like the pair of scissors. I think that's going to make a really good sentiment. You can see we've got all them kind of colours coming through of these circles that are going to pull it back in in a second. Right, so let's construct our circles. Use a bit of wet glue for these. And then pop them in the centres. We'll just keep doing them. So I've got the black ink pad. I don't use anything else now. I'm not sure I ever got on with that. It's really good, isn't it, don't know. Do you know, the, the thing is, you've got to remember is, with other ink pads, you really want to push down as they're kind of soft. And this is a firmer, a like, base to it, so you don't need to put as much pressure. So, really good as well if you've got, um, you know, like, mobility with your wrist and things like that. You don't have to put the pressure on like you do with some of the other ink pads. They're so crisp as well, isn't it? I love the coloured ones as well. I think they're a really nice range of colours. Just that last two. Just pop these on this one. There we go. And then I think I'm going to get some foam pads now, just to give us a little bit of height. So if we get these on the back of the sentiment. Give it even more dimension than with that brilliant background. So we'll pop them up there a second. Just turn these all over. One more. I don't tend to take the backings off until I know where I want to actually put them on my card. So the other one we did up right. So let's have a think where we're going to put this. So I think I'm going to do it there. So it's a little bit off the actual card, a little bit different. So let's position this bit where we want it. And then we can make sure we put our little aliens where we want them as well. So let's pop that coming into the card there. Let's put all these down. So if we have one, I think I think we'll go for We'll go for that. Do we need another one? Let's try it. Let's go for it. And basically on them foam pads as well. It just gives it a bit more height on the card. Just 
making sure I get these scattered around in different directions. There you go. It's a really simple card, that one, but just look at the dimension you've got, and that background really pops, doesn't it, coming through. If you want to do it that way or the other way, you can see it's just, just playing around with those little um, kind of like creatures. So two cards made exactly the same way, just different orientation, gives them a different look, doesn't it? So if I just bring in now that other card that we made in the first one, our magic card, We'll put that there. Oops, a bit more that way. You should see them really well there. So just a bit of fun today, isn't it? That magic card's something different. I don't think many people make them. So have a go with that one yourselves at home. You know what I mean? Have a play around. Just really quirky one to make. And the other one just shows you how effective you can use those little stamps in your collection to pull a card together. Just a sentiment and those little aliens, though. So, um, hopefully that's inspired you. Inspired you. Um, to have a go with your own collections. And if not, um, and you want to try these, remember there's got them fantastic offers on, whereas if you buy three of the five products that are on today, you'll save a further 30%, which is an amazing bargain, really. And it's all to celebrate the 2 million views that Stamps by Me has had on the How to Craft Network. So get involved, look at all the shows that are happening this week. You know, there may be some other offers, who knows? That, I mean, it is a celebration week. But um, thank you for your time today, and thank you for supporting Have a Go. Um, hopefully you will be getting your Port Sunlight tickets as well because I'll be there so if you want some more information on Port Sunlight it is on the Avago page um, and there's also a link to buy the tickets there so I'll not discuss any dates or anything here but go and click the link on the web page it'll tell you all the information there but thanks for joining us today and I'll see you next week bye bye <laughs>